Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Good morning. Bobby. Good morning. I just wanted to start off by saying you guys did a fabulous job um, presenting to the TOC. They were very impressed and they're looking so forward to what we have come up with. Some of the comments were just about the presentation that it was just so well performed and and that um, everybody stepping up like they did um, as a team was awesome. Um, and then they just, I think that everybody in the community has been looking for what we're about to deliver for a really long time. And everybody's really hopeful that this will kind of, you know, I feel, I always have that education and documentation are like the community that holds or the thread that holds the community together because if people don't know what we're doing and if you can't read about it, then nobody's going to understand what we're doing. <laughs> so um, I think that that this is something that's going to really help grow the community. So hat, hats off to you guys. Okay, sip of coffee. Here we go. Let me share my screen. And I am not really going to be doing anything today until um, I'm called upon uh, other than run the, the wiki page. I'm going to turn the meeting over to Arunima. Uh, she set the agenda and we'll talk through it and I will um, interject when needed, but it's all you Arunima. Uh, thank you so much, Bobby. So hello everyone. Good morning, good evening, depending on whichever region you are from. So hello everyone. And starting with the meeting, I think everyone can go with go through the antitrust policy and the code of conduct. If anyone is not familiar with uh, it, then they can go through it. Other than that, let's start with the introductions. So starting with Bobby, uh, you can uh, introduce yourself. Everybody pretty much on the call uh, already knows each other. Just say, you know, I'm here today to work on, um, we have those, those I always call them buckets of, of chores to do. Um, and so now we have to kind of set up, not timelines, but almost like what, what we want to tick off in the next few weeks. Um, so I'm here to help decide what each one of those is and step up where needed. So can't wait to see where we get. So thanks. Thanks a lot, Bobby. So yeah, next uh, we have Kian Luca. Kian Luca, you can just uh, introduce yourself and say hello to everyone. Okay, hello to everyone. I'm Gianluca. I'm a software engineer from, from Italy. Um, I'm lucky. Um, I'm very happy about the last meeting uh, with DOC. And uh, I'd like to contribute to this, uh, this project. Um, and also, I'd like to, uh, to become the, the chair of uh, the um, GitHub template uh, subtopic. Um, I would like to contribute to the project uh, um, by um, writing, uh, starting writing the uh, guideline to uh, that topic and uh, to um, have a feedback about, uh, about that. Uh, thank you. Uh, thanks a lot, Gianluca. Uh, next, we have Kajal. Kajal, are you there in the call? Uh, hello, everyone. Hello. So I'm, uh, I'm Kajal, and I'm the committee chair of uh, templates. So, uh, like, uh, I uh, had a conversation with the unknown uh, grades maintainer. I guess he's uh, Karan. So, I talked to him, uh, like, what uh, he needs as, uh, like, what assistant, assistant he needs. So he uh, told like they uh, want a MedDoc documentation website like Aries have. So like they have only initial idea. They are only thinking about it. And also they uh, don't know what content they want to put there. So like he asked me to uh, like uh, make a structure of folders like what uh, what folders we are going to add in the Mac, uh, MacDoc uh, website. And then we'll uh, proceed further. Also, like uh, talking about the content he was saying, he said like they have regular uh, workshops uh, at NL Crops. So like I didn't understand like what workshops he was talking about. He uh, shared some uh, doc links uh, to uh, 
like uh, C and then I like researched and then uh, like I didn't understand like what this is about and how this is uh, linked to the documentation thing. So I have asked asked to him about this. So for now he said that we have to like uh, they have to create a, a MacDoc uh, documentation and also like they want one thing uh, like they want a editorial review or correction like or uh, in their like uh, GitHub uh, repository. So two things they want from us and about the content they said like uh, uh, I should look the workshop content. Uh, from there, uh, they will uh, get the what content they have to write in uh, MacDoc uh, documentation. So like it's on the uh, beginner level and they are just collecting what they have to write and all. So this is uh, about uh, it. And also I have uh, talked to the Caliper uh, maintainer and he also shared some uh, like what I have to do and all, but I'm still not clear like uh, what I have to contribute to. So I will talk to him and like I'll share this in the next meeting. So that's what I have uh, done in the past week. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much Kajal for giving us, uh, sharing us that information. Uh, next we have Akanksha. Akanksha, you can go ahead and introduce yourself and you know like share us uh, with anything that you have been doing or any doubts that you have so yeah surely so thank you Renema. uh firstly myself akanksha and i, I am lfx menti for onboarding this year and i'm also contributing as a contributing in the documentation as the doc, doc, uh, onboarding chair so I've been working since last week. Uh, I had con a call with John. We have meetings on Wednesdays uh, with John. So we are working on the uh, re de redevelopment of the site and creating a navigation-based persona. I am working with uh, like a few more people who are contributing to onboarding. They are not in the call right now, but yeah, uh, they like some of them, one or two of them are active and they're helping me out and other than that uh, since i require a lot of uh, stuff uh, so i had asked ben about it but whatever i can make i have made some designs and some uh, you know uh, some there are a few uh, architecture layouts and all so uh, i made that and ben had reviewed it and ben had tell told me to make some changes so uh, uh, i'll be just you know uh, right now uh, uh, with the Ben's feedback, I'll be improving it more. And other than that, uh, uh, I have been, you know, doing the work with uh, uh, Rai. I, I, I had asked him to, you know, add me to the contributors list, uh, list in the GitHub. So I'm there and uh, I require some of the things I, I want to ask to Bobby since I had contacted Arunima for that. But since, you know, she's also new to Hyperledger, she won't be knowing much about that. So I wanted to ask you, Bobby, like, uh, right, uh, John told me that we need, you know, stuff for uh, people, like the three personas we have divided it, it in, business personas or uh, contributors or maintainers. We need some content about them, a documentation type of thing for preparing a start here guide. Like uh, I am making the persona design on the main homepage. Once the user comes and, you know, clicks on that uh, persona design, like uh, like wherever, like if he's a developer or a maintainer, for example. So once he clicks on that, he should, like, he should be directly redirected to the page. So I am working on that. But uh, the page that we, will we are creating, uh, so we need a start here guide or, you know, a proper documentation, how to get started and everything. So we need some, uh, no, we need to know the needs, uh, like whatever is needed. So I want to, I wanted to ask Bobby, like how, you know, how can I uh, prepare the documentation for that? So that's a need of onboarding right now as well. And yeah, I, I some of the people are joining right now from the onboarding contributors, uh, I guess. Uh, but yeah, one is already there, uh, Balveer is there. And I guess other hasn't haven't joined yet. So yeah, that's all about onboarding. And Bobby, can if you clear the doubt I asked. 
So, so I'm just going to uh, reframe your question to make sure that I have it correctly. So you've been dealing with Ben about the personas and with John and, and you're getting the user guides and, and what exactly do you need from me insofar as like when a user, a brand new user comes in, are there user guides? Yeah, it, it, we basically needs the user guides, a basic start, not basic, but a start here guide. It would come under user guides only for the personas that we are uh, creating three personas right now. Uh, John said that to, you know, divide them into three personas because last year there were five to six. So these year the personas are developer maintainers is comes under one personas. Then it's business. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Three is better. And those are the three. So good job on that. Cause the yeah. four was a little flaky and my six were out of control. So <laughs> Good. Exactly. So, so these three personas. So once, you know, the user clicks on it, he should be directed to the main, you know, a, a start here guide should be there. So basically it would be kind of come under user guide only. So we need, you know, some documentation help in that. Okay. So two things before we, we move on um, with the introductions is yes, I have the old user guides. And one of the things, if we had time today, I had taken a class last week in, um, the um, AI stuff. And I wanted to show, or at least try to show a flow for you guys, for user guides that might help you. Um, so I will do that um, after the introductions are over, but yes, I do have some old in the lear old learning materials working group, um, uh, lots of different guides and stuff. I'm not sure if they're relevant or updated, but that's a great place for us to start when we get to that section um, in the call today, I will um, show you all that stuff. So yeah, I do. Uh, I have your back. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Bobby. Like, yeah, after, in this meet, if you can share that, that would be of great help. And, you know, there are other people working on user guide already, I guess, on onboarding. And Arunama is already there. So I can work with it, you know, collaborating and I can work on the user guides with them. Uh, sure, Akanksha. Let me know whenever you need any help uh, with the task. Okay, so uh, coming uh, next, we have uh, Tripur. Tripur, you can you know introduce yourself and let us know if you need any help in any of the areas that you are working with. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm the chair of the Docs, and I'm currently working on the standard user guide. Uh, guide and. Uh, We'll be completing it this week, and uh, so uh, so there will be many iterations. I know, but the first draft will be completed uh, this week, and in the next meeting, I will be able to share with all of you, so that you can also make uh, suggestions. And uh, if there is something missing, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And uh, soon I will be con con having a meeting with Solang community i hadn't had time this week uh, i was sick so i was not able to do much but yeah this week i will cover it that's great tripur and take care i hope you recover soon and uh, yeah you. next we have victoria victoria you can go ahead and you know introduce yourself and let us know if you need any help in any of the areas that you're working with Hello everyone. Okay, um, I'm Victoria, um, lead of the best practices um, subcommittee. So um, last week I began um, doing some research on, you know, I was trying to understand what exactly is expected of this um, subcommittee. So on my wiki, I made um, some updates. So Bobby, can you um, please go there? Okay, so um, so the thing is, I want to know if I'll like I'll be able to work with Arunama and then also work with some um community members like to get um a brief overview or something. Just basically, um, yeah. So from the action, this is what I think I will do, but it stands to be corrected. Yeah, so if you see the um, the second one, collaborates with key stakeholders, including developers, maintainers, is that. So I don't know if this is actually possible or if 
um, you have to work solo or something like that. So yeah. Again, uh, uh, that's a great question and, and an interesting situation in this community. Um, the way that I found that it works is that all of these developers and maintainers are available during the times that their calls are. Um, they don't really like to, uh, they have other jobs and other things going on. So it's hard for them to um, meet other than that. So if like you need to get information or give information, um, I would go to their calls. But that's a lot of work in that, and we don't anticipate you having to do all of that. So there's probably an easier way, which we'll figure out as we go. Okay. Uh, maybe we can communicate with them over Discord. Like, I don't know if that's the easier way or not. I didn't get that. Was that for me? Okay. Uh, so, Bobby, I think uh, we are done with the introductions and getting the updates. And so, coming to the next, I think, you know, uh, as you mentioned that uh, creating a timeline for each of the subcommittees. So can you please uh, like tell me like what uh, exactly I'm supposed to do there so that maybe I can start working on that and also throw some light on the management tools. Uh, one of the management tools that came in my mind was Notion. Uh, I don't know like if that will work or maybe you can, uh, you know, tell me about, tell us about any other management tools that will work uh, that with that we can you know manage uh, all the six subcommittees. Um, okay, so uh, first and foremost, thank you, Arunima, for all the hard work. Again, this is uh, great having your direction. Um, I think um, just give me one moment. I have to open the door for you all. Excuse me. If I didn't do that, we'd have lots of barking. Uh, so what I see moving forward and how this is moving forward is um, for management, um, I had thought of um, possibly using Trello, and but that's just too hard when we have this wiki page that we can use as a great management tool. And we've already used it by having our own workspace. So again, I we have these... Uh, six, one, two, three, four, five, six different areas where I think right now we should go into each one and determine what needs to be done or where to start. I mean, we're not, again, this is, we're not asking you for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of work uh, when you, you signed up for this. We're just, you know, asking for your ideas that the work gets done eventually. Uh, so if we start with uh, using these, as like, so for instance, whatever's going on with best practices, this is where the notes would be for that um, and the timeline. So I had put down, I had just modified this about a half hour ago, putting down some government documents that um, help guide the community with best practices. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but in that sense, so anyone working on best practices or anyone who is working in the community and hears a link or gets a a page from the community that has to do with best practices, you should just come right to this wiki page, edit it and drop it in for discussion. Um, again, we don't want you to have to analyze it or it's just for discussion. So when we get to best practices in a little bit, we'll click on these links and see how they can, how I thought that they could help this particular committee. Um, again, same thing with GitHub. GitHub has two committees um, in, underneath this, I think. Um, and it, it has to do with what we talked about at the um, TOC is that the maintainers, when they come in, they need, and again, this deals with best practices as well, if I'm a GitHub maintainer. So I actually, I could be. So I'm going to just use, use a story for an example. So when I was working in 2019 on the giving chain, we wanted to make it a GitHub repository, a lab, so that other um, folks could come in 
and help us, especially the Firefly people, help us build what we had in mind for this decentralized uh, charity chain. So somebody would donate, it would be tracked in the supply chain to the recipient. Um, therefore, it's like a giving chain. Um, so we wanted um, to set up a lab. So we had a look, really, it took us a pretty long time to figure out where that in the TOC recommendations, um, the stuff for uh, maintainers creating a lab. And yeah, there was an awesome GitHub repository that all I needed to do was copy and, and put my information in. And again, there is no user guide for that at this particular moment, which is something that we're gonna talk about in a minute. Um, so that was one of the things. And then when it's a lab, we work on it. Everybody does what's supposed to be done, you know, ooh. And we have, again, we looked at our best practices or we looked at our, yeah, our best practices. And we've decided that we're ready to go to the TOC and make this project incubation. So we go to best practices. We see all the documentation needs. As a maintainer, I'm looking at a lot of other things as well. Security needs, all these other best practices needs. but. Our piece is only documentation. So what documentation do I need to move my project from a lab to a incubated project? And what does it need to look like? Because right now it just said, it, it basically says user documentation. It has really no guidelines for what to do with user documentation. Um, so, so that would be something that would be helpful. As well as once that project is in incubation and it's been working in incubation for a really long time, it's got a, a, a vibrant community. Lots of other people have come and stepped up as maintainers. It's got all the requirements for security, blah, 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 all the things it needs to move into a graduated project. And to move into a graduated project, there's a serious documentation needs that are also reflected in the best practices task force documentation that they've made. So again, we would need to be able to supply some user guides to help the maintainers figure out what they need from documentations moving forward. Um, so for GitHub, that's just the maintainers user guides. And I'm going to call that, and that's kind of where I think Jan Luca is working um, as to figure out what, how to help get a project from lab incubation graduated and maintained i mean you have to if there's um versions you know they have to be documented correctly so that's basically the one github which we have to work on those user guides and templates um the second um part of the github is what the old task force was working on which is we analyzed what everybody in the in the community was using whether it's now this part is taking those maintainers GitHub repositories and um, rendering them using some software program, whether it's read the docs, makes the docs Sphinx, there's a lot of options in the communities using probably all of them. Um, what one do we suggest is Hyperledger, which David Boswell has helped us out with that. We have some paid tooling policies, but which ones do we suggest you use and how to use them um, to get your GitHub repositories that are already past their best, best practices, get those repositories into user docs for people like me, an entrepreneur who doesn't know anything about whether my, pro, my, my business case would need this solution. So that's like kind of what those user docs are for. And again, any maintainer or contributor who wants to know about the product could read those user docs and get where they need to be as well. So those are the two GitHub. Um, the templates themselves, again, we talked about those. Those are, you know, like I need to make a user, user guide. What, what are we using? Make the docs, are we using read the docs? I need to do a white paper. I need to do a use case. I need to make a presentation. I need to start a meetup. I need a, 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 the slide for the meetup, uh, promotion screens. All of those templates need to be housed in a library somewhere, easy for the community to get at. And again, going back to um, um, the onboarding group, you know, that has to be done per level. You know, you can't have a business entrepreneur reading something that a maintainer, you know, needs. So there's different levels to those tem uh, templates as well. So they have to be, you know, geared towards who would be using them. Um, and then the onboarding again is just helping out with um, 
uh, the user guides and, and, and the flow for people to be two clicks away from information uh, at all times. Um, on, uh, and, and the user guides is what I want to talk about in a minute. Um, presentations, um, that's just where we're storing what we're doing. So I should put a copy of right in there. Uh, and we'll make sure at the end of the week that the mentorship presentation recording is in there and the um, task force presentation. You can always use them, edit them, and make them your YouTube library because you guys did present it. If you did present, uh, you should have that as part of your living resume, um, whether you store it in a Google Drive, a Google Doc, but everything you do that is uh, video or um, graphic or whatever, you should store as, as a, a personal portfolio um, and, and grow it daily. Um, I wish that I did that when I had started out so many years ago because it would be very robust. I just started doing it um, eight years ago when I started teaching a class on um, finding jobs. Um, so again, you will forget what you do. So make sure if you did this presentation or if you spoke at them, take the recording and put it in your personal folder. Um, anyway, so uh, presentations, we want to, again, do meetups with workshops once we develop these guidelines towards the end of this uh, summer project in the fall we want to start presenting these things to the community so that they know where to find these templates um, so again that's a team project the presentations but that's where all the information for the presentations as a management tool should be stored and then again, anyone working on the mentorship projects, any information on the mentorship projects. So for instance, if you're working with the Solang community and the mentors like, I need this, 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 you might want to just take a note and put it on that page. So we know when we're doing a presentation um, to make a side note to, to address those needs for the mentors. Um, so basically that's the management. Um, I don't know if... Um, everybody agrees with doing it that way. Anybody have any comments about keeping our work moving forward in these um, buckets here? Thoughts, comments? Uh, I think no, Bobby. It was very clear for me. I And I guess it was clear for others as well. Okay, good. So now what I want to talk about, again, I don't... If we go to um, each one of these, we'll see, for instance, let's do best practices first. Okay, so I mentioned when I was talking about best practices, again, and I'm just brainstorming. Um, best practices for... Maintainers contributors, and I don't believe the third bucket. What do you think, Akansha, about having enterprise people aren't really going to be concerned about best practices? They're just getting information. What do you think? Do they need to be in here? Um, the, the enterprises, uh, I, I like John didn't tell me exactly, but he just told me that we can have the, like, if a, uh, organization uh, heads of organization or different uh, enterprises they come to hyperledger so maybe it's for that but i have to you know uh, ask more about it from john i'll let you know yeah so i'm going to leave them out for best practices because they don't need to know really internal community best practices like maintainers or contributors would uh, so these best practice what we come up with are guidelines for the maintainers is going to be uh, a lot with GitHub guidelines for yes. both, for setting up and using user guide or rendering. User guides, contributors, contributors have to more deal with that section that, um, Oh, I forget the gentleman's name. He's a, um, Arun is the technical steering committee point, but I forget the gentleman he's working with name. But for the contributors, it's the start here, which is um, a place they go to learn about um, 
yes. picking up a, a code that they need fixing or whatever. Um, so these two things need to understand what the best practices are. So again, we have all summer to figure this out. Um, I, I, I'm waiting for you know the chair to step up and or anyone in the group to step up and, and come up with ideas for this over the next couple of weeks. This is one project. Um, I'm not sure why I copied these links, but um, I thought that they would be very helpful. So um, this is the project incubation exit criteria. So the uh, TOC, we decided that this is what the requirements are for leaving. And where is documentation? This is a little bit of the best practices. Um, best practices. It doesn't say anything about documentation, what the documentation needs are. Um, but also we need, again, to document this. So if I am coming in um, e to exit incubation, how am I going, you know, do I want to, okay, let me start all over again. My, my brain is moving too fast. Um, is this GitHub repository the best way to help the maintainers move their projects out of incubation? That's a question we have to answer. Um, so that I thought would be helpful for our research. This is also um, something that's always discussed in the TOC meetings, always changing. This is a living diagram. Um, but these are the six possible states of a project in Hyperledger and what you need to um, in each proposal. So again, the question I asked before, is this GitHub repository the best way to teach people or show people how to do what they need to do? Um, or is there maybe an easier way to create something um, for them that's, you know, to help them out? And then the last thing was this issue 44. What's this? Oh, this is for the audience. Oh, no, no, this is this is something else. Never mind. Um, so again, if you want, if if everyone in the group who's working on best practices wants to take a, a, a chance at the timeline, this is how I do timelines. So I would go to. macros and I click under visual and images the roadmap planner and this is wonderful to use so for lane one you would edit it and say um so for the maintainers who want to set up a lab we're going to set up a tutorial it's going to take us, we're going to call step one uh, brainstorming. So we have to brainstorm on what that looks like. That's going to be step one. And I'm just, oh, sorry. And again, you can edit these dates. We don't need this to 2024. We're just going to go to the end of the summer. Um, and you can move these as you see fit. And so if the chairs want to take a whack at this and then you just hit insert and it will show up here. Um, so if anybody wants to take a whack at that as a chair of a group, um, after we discuss what's going on with them today, um, talk to Arunima and she can, you know, help you out with, you know, what might be on each one of these. Um, but that was just an idea. And again, um, if you want to use Google Drives and Google Docs, all you have to do is put a link to the page um, here in this wiki page. So this wiki page, we're not like, I'm not saying you have to work here. You can work anywhere you want, just as long as you put a link to it on this, this page so that we can all keep track of our work together. Um, so for GitHub, again, this has to be broken out into two different ones um, and a timeline. So uh, 
Gianluca, whoever's working as a chair on these, if you want to try take a whack at that timeline. Um, again, Arunamu would be there. Same thing for templates and onboarding. Why I want to talk about user guides, I just, uh, before I, I, I'm going to see if Arunima has anything she needs to discuss, but we're going to be doing a lot of user guides. And I, again, was in a class um, before I actually, I'm going to turn it back over to Arunima to see if she has anything to talk to the teams about other than, you know, helping them out with their timelines uh, for the week. Um, and then I want to show you um, something that I learned in that class. So, Maruna, do you have any uh, comments? Uh, for now, no, I don't have any comments. But yeah, if uh, any of you all need help in, you know, framing the timelines, just, you know, let me know through email or LinkedIn. And I will be more than happy to help you out. And if required, maybe we can plan a one-on-one -on -one meet and help you out with it. So, yeah, feel free to shoot an email or, you know, text me on LinkedIn if you need any help. That's, that's uh, from my side, Bobby. You can uh, now just uh, share with us what you have been learning about. Sorry for last minute. Sorry about that. When I went into the um, uh, dashboard, it made a ding, a ding and my dogs thought my doorbell rang. So they went crazy. So I had to calm them down. So I took this class and I've checked up and share the information in it. Um, over the weekend, um, there's this women's group in Miami called, or just a group of empowered women who started this company called Mia. Um, and I suggest everyone join it. It's great. They do great classes. But they had this class this week, and one of the workflows that they talked about had really interested me. So let me see if I can do this. So let's see. So the, basically, there's a lot of other programs and information in this that wasn't necessary. But one of the flows, and I'm going to pull this over now so that I can work in the wiki page. Um, so the first flow is, uh, and let's, I don't know if it works. Um, again, I just had time to sit in the class, but the first flow would be, um, I'm gonna type and turn my mute off because of the dogs from. Sorry about that. So um, let me see if I can do this flow right. So I'm just gonna um, put an example. Example. Um,
Okay, so this is basically, again, the more information you give, um, the better you're going to get results from these chatbots and from these um, uh, AI things. So if I take this, again, have patience with me, and I'm going to go to... Just fix one thing. Okay. So this is a chatbot. And I'm going to put in. Ah, come on. My computer's being such a brat. Okay, and I'm going to take that and we'll go back to our and this is the result of that. So now I'm going to take that and let me go back to uh, so the first step was to put it in chat. The next day was image creation. And I am not a graphics designer. So Stable Diffusion is a free program that generates graphics. It was beyond my capability. I could not possibly get anything that I would use in a, in a, in a um, course or a textbook or a user guide. It was more funky and, and I maybe my prompts were wrong. Um, but again, and, and with that chatbot, there's... I'm, I'm going to be teaching a class on that um, coming up in a month. There's way more ways to use that. Like you could now take that outline and say, what am I missing? And it would redo it for you. Uh, compare it to other ones. What do I, you know, like, so there's ways that you can really fine tune that, but I'm just more showing you more the flow. So again, the images that we'll be using for user guides will be coming from uh, Ben and David Boswell as the um, library of images or, or, um, <clears throat> graphics that are with the new brand. Um, so we won't have to worry about like the day two challenge. Oh, and by the way, I, what I mentioned with the chat bot, I think that that is um, interesting um, as far as the questions for the chat bot and how to create an effective prompt. Um, I'll put this on there as well. So these will help you um, create this material. So, uh, so to get her fine, fine. Okay. Fringe. Chat um, so if you use these in the in the thing that I pasted in the chat bot, um, it will help with your um, results. But again, I'm just showing you the flow. So then if we go back to where's Mia? Yeah. And creating videos, is this the one? Yes. So this I find um, amazing. I have uh, purchased a subscription to it because I'm gonna use it all the time in, in what I do um, because of how well it is. Um, so let me just log in. And again, for us, we're not, um, 
here to create massive, spend massive amounts of time creating massive user guides. We are here to get them to the community. So it is okay to use all these tools for that. Everybody's using them. So don't be afraid to use them. Um, so we want script to video. Oh, <laughs> I didn't have the right thing in my, uh... where did we go? Okay, hold on a second. I'm sorry, this is taking me so long. Oh, I keep hitting the wrong buttons. Again, I apologize for my computer. I'm getting there. Let me see where I put it. Oh, there it is. So I'm going to copy the results from our outline in the chat bot. And then I'm going to go to that Pictionary. Don't know where it is. I gotta stop sharing my screen for a second. I apologize for this. I can't even stop sharing my screen. My computer is so backwards. Okay, just give me one second. There it is. Okay, sorry. Okay, so I'm just going to paste in, did I get it? Yeah, paste in the information that the chatbot gave us and hit proceed. And it's gonna ask me for a template. Now, what I'm envisioning is that the template group will be working with David um, and we will have a my template, which is the Hyperledger template. So right now, I mean, none of these scream Hyperledger to me. So I'm just going to pick this one. Um, and then I just go one to one ratio because I haven't done the research on it. So I don't know which one's best for my needs. So that one looks good. And then it creates a storyboard for you, which to me is pretty incredible um, because it creates this great video. And again, I don't like the graphics that it shows, um, but if you have a template, it would be your graphics. So there wouldn't be any questioning about what would be um, showing up in there. And then there's another, well, that's building. Let me go back to Mia here. Um, and then what you do is you take this video And you go to this Gamma app and Gamma will create a presentation for you um, with a uh, voice. So you could either have the words there or you can have an, uh, an AI voice and you get to pick if it's male, female. Um, there's like a hundred different voices you can pick from, which will do the speaking for your presentation. And again, if we do that, I mean, this takes like no time. Okay. Oh, now it's got to create the scenes. Um, and if we want to do that for the user guides, if we all are using the same thing in the same templates, this could be amazing. Sorry, this takes so long. 
See if we can get gamma started so we can put this into gamma. Yeah, Kajal, isn't this cool? <laughs> this is just incredible for educators. I mean, you can really focus on your content, not the creation part. So this is gamma and you can import what we just made or you can create it new. You can upload old. These are some of the ones that I've been working on. Um, so it is, it, it, it's pretty incredible. So again, I'm trying to find a theme for my company because I want to put these up out in my metaverse school so that um, I'm current. Um, let's see if Pictionary came up with our video yet. Not yet. So again, that's the flow that I think I'm going to try to use when I use these tools would be to put my outline in the chat bot take that outline and put it into Pictoria AI, which hopefully has a templated Hyperledger outline and then create a video storyboard, 29 out of 29, let's go. And then here you go, let's preview it. Again, I don't like the graphics, but that's my weakest point is, is graphics. If they didn't understand labs. <laughs> I love the pictures they're using. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? I'm, I'm just saying that I love the pictures that uh, the tutorial is using. <laughs> Well, we get the idea, you know, I need to walk through the entire making up, again. but you see how easy that can be. And then again, let me see. I don't know. I don't know if I know how to take this right away and put it into gamma, but then gamma will take this presentation and add the voiceover, get rid of the words, uh, like, so you can choose to get rid of these words and have the avatar talk again. So these are, I want everybody, again, we're running out of time here. So let's. So if everybody wants to work on their timeline a little bit, that would be great if you're a chair. And if not, if you want to try to just play around with the flow that we just did over, so go to chat, jet, chat uh, GPT, put in an outline of one of the user guides, one of the whatever you're working on um, for this group and um, see if you can do it all the way through um, Pictoria and to, um, gamma and see if you you know just play around with it and and then if you if you want uh let us know on the uh page here let's go back to where we were hey you can go back to let me see if i have it here this page and just put the date that you come to the page and uh, a link or just um, I played around with the workflow and I have um, a user guide to show you, whatever. So just put uh, the date, you know, edit this page, 
put the date and let us know for the next meeting um, because Aruna and I look at this page when we start the agenda. Look at this page, well, note, you know, and put down if you did anything um, so that we know to uh, start the screen. meeting. I'm it's sorry, what? It's just your screen. Oh, hold on just a moment then. Hold on, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's just our regular screen, the... Uh, it's just the... Um, let me put the link in the chat too, even though everybody should have this one. Um, um, and I put that stuff here under user guide. So if you do play around with it and want to present, make sure you put it on the documentation page. Um, oh, I guess I didn't save where I will. I'll go back. The information will be on user guides about uh, the workflow, chat, GBT, Pictionary, and then, and then Gamma. Um, and if anybody wants to use the existing uh, Hyperledger themes and try to create a template in Pictoria, that would be great. Um, I don't know, just play around with it and see what you come up with. Um, but I will put this um, before I um, leave um, for a break. I will make sure this user guide has what we just discussed um, and I will save the one I was working on. So does anybody have any questions for me? Uh, Bobby, can you share the uh, link where we can get the existing templates or the old templates? Um, sure, okay. So how I get to those is if you go up to um, the search bar in the ah, and type, uh, learning materials development working group or just the initials um and go to i like to go to meeting notes because then i know i'm in the old page probably the screen is not sure no i'm not sharing my screen again sorry hold on <laughs> i keep stop sharing Okay, so I just typed in the search engine here, learning materials development working group, and I went to one of the meeting notes. Um, and then if you are in the learning materials, the archived learning materials development working group, um, you will see here under templates, you have all of those. And then here, for if anybody wants to take a whack at the graphics for the template for the Victoria, here is a graphics standard set. with Google Drive full of a ton. But again, this is all gonna be outdated as soon as Ben, oh, I have to request access again, all right, whatever. And you can request access, it's just David Boswell, he'll send it right over to you. Um, but there's all of these uh, branding guidelines, um, projects, uh, presentation guidelines. So these are a lot of, and again, some of them we might not need, this is like, years of clogged information it needs to be streamlined so like when you go to the templates and you want to do a use case download the template boom you're ready to go white paper boom uh project proposal boom you know like everything's right there um I if all of these are gone yeah i think they're redoing them all yeah that's a shame i think i have them somewhere so if you need more graphics you can just steal them from any presentation that's out there again. Um, I would, I don't know if, no, I wouldn't. I was gonna say, I would go to the presentation that Ben gave us because he gave us a slide with the new logo, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so this is the, um, it's the learning materials development working group that has that best practices and template um, guide. And um, we were talking about the user guides. This is also right here. So here are the old uh, welcome guides. So if you click becoming a community member on the homepage of the Learning Materials Working Group, you will get to, again, this is where these videos that we just went through would be awesome. Um, because Get a Linux login, edit a wiki page, join the calls and how to get involved. This is getting involved with open source. Um, so, it, and it says community roles. If you are involved in the Hyperledger community, we are urging you to put these on your business cards, your LinkedIn page, and your resumes. Um, and this is if you want wording on how to do that, here's wording for that. So, 
um, this needs to be looked at and redone too. So again, there's so many things and hopefully that um, stuff that I showed you will help us get that done much quicker. That's it for me. We're over a minute. Anybody have any comments? Uh, yeah, Bobby, I just wanted to ask one more thing. So uh, like uh, you talked uh, last in last week, you told about that to talk to men. So is there any update or any information about the collaborative program you were talking about? Nothing, but I will reach out to him again. When do you guys have your meeting? Uh, with John, you're talking about? Yes, yes, the onboarding. Yeah, okay. So John uh, has scheduled the meet uh, on, on Wednesday, 12 p.m. to uh, 1 p.m., which is 9.30 uh, IDT, Indian Stand, IST. And according to it, it's 12 mountain time, I guess, MD. 12 a.m. 12 p.m. Mountain time. Okay, I'm, I'll try to make that. I'm on the road Wednesday, but I will try to sit in on that and see what's going on with onboarding. If not, I'll just listen to the recording. Okay, so uh, actually the it's it happens on Google Meet, but I'll share, send you a invite link after the meet. This meet, I'll send share you the link with of that meet. If you can join, um, it would be really great. Or otherwise, also, like, I'll record the meet for you. You know, they're automatically recorded, and um, the Hyperledger community will put it on your um, page. Oh, but, like, uh, uh, like right now, because it happens, not it does not happen on Zoom. It happens on Meet, the Meet, uh, like, Google Meet that John has. Oh, 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 I see. Okay. Thank you. I see. Okay. okay, it's not I'll, a community Zoom call. I get it. I'll share the link with you and with the mail after the meet. Definitely. Okay, thank you. Anybody else have any questions? Oh, well, then I'll talk to you next week or email me if you have anything or reach out in LinkedIn. Sure. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. Bye. Thank you, Bobby. Bye. so like uh, I have I, I guess uh, onboarding people are also here uh, some of them just wanted to uh, ask like what's going on what are you guys contributing in onboarding well here I know he's helping me in the navigation part the navigation persona thing uh, other than that uh, others can just tell me like what are they you know planning to do and also, uh, like Agnes, I just saw that you are also part of this user guide thing, you know, documentation. So just a recommendation, if you can work on that for onboarding as well, because then you will have to just a simple uh, one task would be there that you have to create that those user guides. So it would help in onboarding as well. So that is the thing that you can take up on. Uh, sorry, come again. Am I audible now? Yes, yes. Okay, so I was just uh, like watching out. So your name was there in the user guides or best practices thing in documentation. Is it there, right? It is there as a contributor. Yes. Okay, so I yes. was just saying that you can just work on that for now if you know. Uh, right. I guess I guess you missed the last meet. So that's what you can work on. You can work on the user guides for the three personas that the onboarding team is focused on. The developer, maintainers, business users, and enterprise. You can work on preparing a template and user guide for that a start so that we can, you know, have a start here guide for the uh, people who are onboarding. That was what I was saying. Okay, okay. You said yeah. something about navigation. Yeah, uh, the navigation uh, thing that we are working on. So Balveer is contributing in that. If like, do you have experience in Figma, Agnes? No, no, no. I'm not a okay. content person. Okay, yeah, that's why I recommended that you can work on the user guides better. Like it, it would be better because you can work on research and creating the templates and everything. So Balveer is uh, contributing in that right now with me and uh, uh, Kajal is also there, I guess, but she uh, she hasn't, I don't know if she's, uh, she has started contributing. Can you just tell me, Kajal? 
uh, sorry like i was uh, busy last week i had some test so like uh, i went through the chats and uh, you uh, told to create some icons three icons for the uh, persona yes, so yes. like okay. what is this about okay and so where are uh, you going to use these icons like on the navigation bar of there uh i had sent a architecture a rough design that i made on uh, draw the tio draw the tio is a i'll just share my screen better so that you can we, i can just show you what exactly is going on yes but um, yeah i'll just share, i'll just share it just a second uh so give me a second guys so i had made this design on draw.io uh, for like since while we was doing so this is a you know rough design of exactly how are we changing the site right so this is hyperledger's present site uh yeah so this is the present site of hyperledger just a second it's loading yeah so this is the present site so we have to you know revamp the website so that uh, it becomes more user friendly and you know we are creating basically our project is based on creating a uh, a more user friendly website for the new users for the people who will be meant, uh, onboarding the site so this is the present site and this is just a second how are this uh so this is what i created since balveer asked me like what should he work on so i guess balveer you are working on it or you haven't uh, started yet you have started working or still working on it like what's the status uh, last day i didn't get time but surely i'll start in few days no no problem like it would be really good if you you know you can uh, Uh, like completed by day like by, by day after tomorrow if possible uh, like uh, my college uh, is reopening so i need to travel there that's why oh, taking so some... okay cool cool okay never mind never mind so it's okay just let me know by when can you do it so, or else you know i'll just take up if uh, if like i need in urgent work so this uh, guys just see like this is what we are will be transforming right now this is my suggestions uh, right now we'll be having uh, reviews from the mentors as well on wednesday we have a meet i'll have i, I have a meet with john so if possible i'll i'll ask if i can you know uh, invite you guys also there so but uh, that doesn't matter so this is the thing that we are planning for now and uh, we have to make so uh, this site right now hyperledger site would be you know we becoming like this that's what we have to focus on right now that we have to create a you know, navigation based personas that's what i was talking about agnes did you understand now yeah 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 i'm okay yeah so this is the front end part we are you know working on right now and doesn't matter if you you are not much used to that and if you want to learn figma that's a great thing but uh, if you want to work on the research part that is cool as well and you can create a template for that so that's what because we really need the start here guys as soon as we complete making the navigation bar and everything here we'll be requiring the start here guides for uh, for the three personas that would be our first thing so it would be great if we completed by you know this week or next week and other than that uh, uh, yeah so it was uh, kajal so Kajal will be working on the front end part part only, right? On the Figma thing, uh, or I can uh, I can else? help I can help Agnes in creating templates also because in a documentation task force I am uh, doing the template thing, so I can help her. Okay. Like. Okay. Yeah. So do you want to work? I have a question. In... Yeah. Yeah. Go on. Um. Do we have what we want to go on the site in terms of content? So when we have the navigation bar, for example, uh, or the personas, do you have the specific things we are going to put on the website? 
just a second, yeah. So yeah, I'll just show you an example of that. What exactly we are having in, you know, this is the start here guide, existing one. So this is not much user friendly and no one can really understand how to get started. Can, if you just read, you, you, you tell me like, is, do you think like this is something that, you know, a user should, uh, 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 will understand at first? A new user comes to the site. So this is what the start here existing guide guide is. But uh, we need to completely, you know, transform this and make it a proper, uh, like what you will, you will be creating or other user people who are working on user guide would be creating would be here instead of this. So that the new contributors can, you know, understand the workflow easily that how the thing, the Bobby explained it, how to get started for the contributors. And so just like this, there would be three uh, start here guides first for this. And here in this section, we'll be having resources. So what will come under resources would be the different sites of Hyperledger. Who are like, uh, there is one more thing that we are working on. Uh, it is known as high traffic pages. pages. So uh, I have asked for the information because it's still under process because until and unless we receive the information from Hyperledger, we can, you know, cannot work on that. So here in the resources, we'll be having a section of resources and there would be the pages which are related to the contributor, uh, the, you know, the thing the contributors required. So according to the needs of the contributor or the maintainer, we'll be having this thing uh, a resources section and the contributor or user can directly go to that uh, page like for example bevel or aries or these projects and all so uh, we'll see that which are the most uh, traveled pages so we'll be getting the data about that soon so we'll be putting them here so uh, for now uh, that is a later part but for now this part this would be what that you guys be creating a proper user guide would be there in place of this you know uh, no, uh, this basic web page Right, Agnes, if uh, you are getting what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this is the start here guide thing. Now, other than uh, the two th th things are there. And uh, Kajal, so just wanted to ask, so you want to work only on this thing or on the Figma design as well? Uh, I want to work on both of these things. Like okay, I have worked cool. on Figma. And I've also done some research work. So I'm uh, uh, okay with these things. Okay, right. So regarding the that thing, I'll just open the Figma design as well. Just give me a uh, second. I have a question like for the starter website, how uh -huh. we are going to use the templates? Uh, like uh, you said, we have to create templates. And also, yeah. like, we'll be uh, providing uh, uh, three options, like three personas for uh, different people, like the developer one will uh, click uh -huh. and then navigate to this section. Uh -huh. And like this only you are saying. Okay. Like, I didn't completely understand your question properly. Can you just, you know, reframe it and say yeah, yeah. So I am uh, saying that you said we have to uh, create templates. So like we uh, just saw the website, we have like a simple website and it's for everyone. Be it contribute, uh, be it contributor, develop, developer or maintainer. So uh, this, uh, do we have to like personalize this uh, start here for three different personas? Like? Yes. Okay. So uh, regarding templates part, Template, I, templates, I'm just saying, uh, you know, in the aspect of, of a, a user guide only, not exactly, you know, a proper uh, template comes under, there are different types of templates that we talk yes. about. And in Hyperledger, uh, you already know, because we had the discussion in last week as well, Bobby cleared it out that one is for GitHub thing and one is for that. So the template I am talking about is the one that I just show, showed you, the start here guide only. So you are right that we'll be customizing it according to the personas. So that is what we have to do. Three different uh, start here guides for three different personas. Uh, okay, okay. So we, we will be merging it in a single website? Or no, 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 no. I'll just explain that again, what exactly we'll be doing. So... Uh, like, uh, when the user will click on the website, it will just redirect 
to what he has chosen okay yeah so these are the three pages ha huh. okay you did okay. other than yes. that i'll just you know just uh, explain it again so i am a new user i'll just um, so that everyone can understand it better so i am a new user and this is my hyperledger site what i mean by hyperledger site the one that i just showed you so uh, just imagine that this is a hyperledger site this is a navigation bar and this is uh, right now we only see this building better together thing uh, and there is no this section but we'll be creating this section for the front end part and here like uh, a something it's not exactly how we'll be laying it off it's it's just a rough design so there would be this question or you know a, a the line type of thing that will ask which role uh, describes you as the best or you know what uh, attracts you to hyperledger and everything there would be a sim simple line and this these three uh, sections would be there very small ones not you know very big ones so we i, I and balbi are working on this uh, and if anyone else is also interested like kajal said so you can help me out in this so Uh, once the user clicks that they, there would be a traveling a button here a arrow or a button something like the one i have created like this one so uh, once the user clicks on that for example this is for the business user as he or she goes here he'll directly be redirected to this uh, start here guys right that you guys would be creating like the agnes is going so he'll like he'll be directly you know Yeah, it would be easier for the person to directly go to the page is of his or her best benefit. Right now, if you go to the hyperledger website, everything is so complicated. You cannot understand what to go, where to go. So once the contributor, or for example, I am a new user and I am a contributor, I come to this page. I'll see a proper GitHub template, uh, the GitHub template that you know uh, the user is working on. or uh, like a github template is a different thing but the template i am working about talking about is this one like a proper page template so this is what uh, our project is that we have to make it easier for the new user to find and this section the uh, left hand section section would be having different columns i am not sure about what do those columns would be i'll be asking you to john but definitely there would be a column for resources where the uh, pages that are you know of the, like most relatable pages for a contributor or a maintainer is would be here so directly the contributor can click on that and you know go to that project or that page and get the uh, you know guidance without uh, much of much you know problems that we are facing right now so this is all about the thing that we are working on on boarding right now and other than that if anyone has any uh, question just you know shoot them. uh no one has any question uh yeah so uh hello am i audible yes yeah okay so this all was all about and if you guys understood it that's well and good and uh, regarding regarding the website yeah i was talking about the icons so uh, if any one of you is good in making icons yeah Sorry, one clarification. You said the meeting is on Wednesday, not Thursday. I couldn't hear you. Can you please come on? When did you say the meetings are on Wednesdays or on Thursdays? Yeah. So there is one more meet that is not uh, an a community meet, but I will be requesting John to make it to to, to a community meet so that everyone can join in. But in that meet, basically the work that we do. John verifies and reviews that, and I just uh, uh, tell whatever he said in the group, and you know, inform it to you guys. So that's not um, a meet that you know we miss or something. The meet we have right now on every Monday, it's what's recorded in Hyperledger. So this is what this you have to definitely attend. But I'll definitely ask uh, John once that if you guys can attend the meeting on Wednesday, it's nine thirty p.m. in Indian Standard Time and twelve p.m. in uh mountain standard the mountain time so if you know if possible i'll share the link with you all as well okay yeah so other than that any more questions and balvi please inform me like you know if you have any problem i can work start working on it for you if you work 
for this week or uh, or for few days just let me i guess i am over with everything what i wanted to say and any me are uh, extremely sorry sorry so yeah can we guys can we wrap up guys if you will say i will just wrap up for today yeah so you can wrap up okay cool thank you guys and if you guys have any problem please you know you can ping me every anywhere we have whatsapp group for the onboarding people other than that you can just uh, approach me on linkedin or discord everywhere i'm there so any problem just let me know i'll be there see you guys bye bye, bye.